Now we will see how to configure H2 in Spring Boot. We will see how to enable H2 console and how to set data source URL and how to use file based storage. To enable H2 console, we have to use this property spring.h2.console.enabled equal to true. By default, this console is not enabled in Spring Boot. So H2 console is nothing but it's a embedded GUI console for browsing the contents of a database and running SQL queries. So now I will show you in the microservice. So I have added this property spring.h2.console.enabled equal to true and I will start the service. Now you see H2 console is available at slash H2 console and you can also see the data source URL. Now let's go to browser and open H2 console. And you have to use this data source URL and copy paste here and click on test connection. So the connection is successful. Now click on connect. Now you see H2 console here. Also, I will create table using Postman. Now I'll click on send. So table is created successfully. Now let's go to console and refresh the console. Now you see table is created. So with H2 console, you can see the list of tables and also you can execute the queries. So now the problem is every time you restart the service, the data source URL will be changed. To fix that, you have to use this property spring.datasource.url equal to. So you have to set the database name like H2DB or whatever DB. So now I'll go to here and set the data source URL. So I will use my H2DB and I will restart the service. Now you see it takes the same data source URL that we have mentioned in application dot properties. Now let's go to the H2 console. And give the JDBC URL and click on test connection. And now connect. Now the problem is whatever tables that we have created earlier using Postman is not available now. This is due to as soon as you restart the service, H2 clears the data since we are using the in-memory database of H2. To fix that problem, we have to use file-based storage. So the property remains same, spring.datasource.url, but instead of mem, we have to use file and we have to provide the absolute path for the file database. Now I'll go to service and instead of mem, I'll say file and I want to create in my home directory and I also has 
H2 directory. So I'll say under H2 directory, I want to have the my H2 database. Now I'll restart the service. Now let's go to console and reload the console. And here you have to copy paste this JDBC data source URL and do test connection. See so with the file based data source, the username is empty, not SA and just click on test connection and connect. Now from post when I'll create the table. And after refresh, you see the table. So even I'll just restart it to show that our database changes are not lost. Now let's go to console again. And click connect. And you see our table that we have created using Postman is now available. Also, as we have observed with the file based JDBC URL, the username is empty. So we can use spring dot data set source dot username and spring dot data source dot password instead of empty. Now let's go to microservice and add those two properties. Spring data source username, spring data source password. I'll stop the service and I'll start again. Since the file based database already has the username password stored, so I'll just change it to my history db1 and use the username and password and I will start the service. Now you will see a different database my h2 db1 and let's go to console. and use this data source URL and use SA as username and password as password and click on click on connect and now create the table and refresh you see the table here and also since we have given the absolute location of the data source file based h2 database now you see the database files are created here mydb.mvdb my h 2 db.mvdb like that in the next videos we will see how we will explore the other methods that are provided by the Spring JDBC template. So with all these configurations, we can easily validate the CRUD operations performed by JDBC template.